And the Jehovah's Witnesses, the, the governing body, define the word lie as not telling the truth to someone who's entitled to it. That's a quote from their Aid to Bible Understanding book. Not telling the truth to someone who's entitled to it. So, uh, just a reference from my notes here, and to give a little back, background to that, they, uh, they consider people like myself as an opposer. They, have, they class me as an opposer. And uh, opposers are someone that you're not supposed to talk to your son or even associate with, and you should get away from them immediately. And uh, it talks about uh, here in this quote, they, they consider me an enemy, you know, of, of the true Christian religion. And I'm quoting the Watchtower here from the Watchtower, July 15, 1961, page 420, they say, then in order to hate what is bad, a Christian must hate the person with whom the badness is inseparably linked. So you don't only hate the bad teaching they're giving you, but you've got to hate the person because he's the one that's inseparably linked with that badness. Okay? And then, like I said, the Watchtower, July 15, 1961, page 420. And then to back it up, they say, how are Jehovah's Witnesses to hate? Now, this is coming from Watchtower, October 1st, 1952, page 599. How are Jehovah's Witnesses to hate? Okay, it's, they say, we must hate in the truest sense, which is to regard with extreme and active aversion, to consider as loathsome, odious, filthy, to detest. Okay, so obviously, I do not, being an opposer in their, in their theology, I do not rate being entitled to the truth under their definition of what a lie is. So I, that's what I always get when I'm talking, <laughs> well, we've got another appointment. You know, we, we really must go, you know, which is not true. But yeah, they don't have another appointment. They just don't want to talk to me anymore. Uh, yes? Well, they, uh, uh, well, you got to remember here, you're dealing with people who you can show them something point blank like that. Uh, in fact, it's even, uh, in fact, it's even on here. But didn't Jesus say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you? Matthew 5, 43 through 44. Yes, says the watchtower, that is true. But when a person persists in opposing their teachings, they say, da, 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 da. What well, I just quoted you all a minute ago. Uh, so it's this is a classic rationalization. You've got a verse that, but you're going to find a way to get around it. You know, and they do this with a, a ton of verses as, we probably don't have time to go into and in all those things. But anyway, to, to continue what I was saying and to get back to Ross's question here, uh, I saw time was up. The, the Lord was rapidly closing my opportunity because these others were trying to drag him off. And I said, well, just before you go, and I finally opened my briefcase. Uh, just a couple of things I want to show you. We've been standing here for about 20 minutes talking about these things, false prophets. What about the guy with the pyramids? Uh, what about God living in the star system, Pleiades on this? planet or, or star outclone and, and all these other teachings that we were going over, ain't demons being saved. Well, at that point, with the other ones tugging on your arm, but they did hang in there for a minute, and I handed them these books. Here's one by their very founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses. The time is at hand. If you want a good joke on that, read uh, Luke 21, 8. <laughs> and then remember remember this, this title of, uh, of uh, Charles Taz Russell's uh, book here. But I handed them this book and showed them, for not that much time here, but I, uh, I guess for the sake of the tape, I could give you a couple of quotes here. I handed them this and I, I showed them where uh, Charles Taz Russell predicted the end of the time, end times in 1914. This, is, this book is from 1909. He's the very founder of their organization. And as we'll look in, a, in their uh, brief history here in the lecture outline in just a second, but uh, he states in here on page 76, in this chapter we present the Bible evidence proving that the full end of the times of the Gentiles, i.e. the full end of their lease of dominion, will be reached in A.D. 1914. And that, that date will be the, the farthest limit of the rule of imperfect man. And he goes through all these things talking about how God's going to set up his kingdom and overthrow, you know, these earthly kingdoms that we have here. On page 98, he says, true, uh, 
it is expecting great things to claim as we do that within the coming 26 years, all present governments will be overthrown and dissolved. Uh, but we are living in a special and peculiar time, the day of Jehovah, in which matters culminate quickly, and it is written, a short, a short work will the Lord make on the earth, and then going down the page here a little bit, we consider it an established truth that the final end of the kingdoms of this world and the full establishment of the kingdom of God will be accomplished at the end of A.D. 1914. And then I think it's on page 101, although I didn't get the cross-reference. Yeah, he says right here, uh, the kingdom of God will be established, this is on page 101. He says that it is pointed out in prophecy as due to begin the exercise of power in 1878 and that the battle of the great day of God Almighty, Revelation 1614, will end in AD 1914 with the complete overthrow of Earth's present rulership is already commenced. And, uh, you know, it's basically talking about, you know, that great day of Armageddon and things. Uh, and this kind of shook him up because what, what happened was I started telling him right off because I could see times running out. Everything we've been talking about for the last 20 minutes was all Watchtower doctrine. It was all taught by the Jehovah's Witnesses. And all that time they were condemning all these teachings of being of the devil, false. So See, but I had been able to do it by asking questions and letting them give me answers to those questions. But see, I kind of controlled the conversation by asking the questions and let them tell me. And, it, you know, you can start to see him shake and get nervous and everything because these weren't some photo reprint of some book. I mean, these are the actual books. The time is at hand from his uh, studies in the scripture. In fact, uh, Charles Taz Russell had said that if, if you don't read, you, you can't really read the Bible alone. You must have his studies in the scriptures. Otherwise, you'll go into darkness within two years. So I showed him that. I showed him uh, this book by their second president. Uh, also by the Watchtower Society, uh, uh, it's called Reconciliation, and on page 14, uh, Judge Rutherford, who wrote this book, who was the president of the Watchtower Society, taught, but the greatness and size of other stars or planets is small when compared with the Pleiades' importance, because the Pleiades is the place of the eternal throne of God. That's page 14, and you should have... Uh, the Jehovah's Witness is trying to break it up, had this book in her hand yesterday, and she read that. And you could, sometimes you can tell when something got through. It, it shook her up. She handed the book back to me quickly and tried to get the rest going out. But, uh, you know, I, the point was made because it was right there. And, uh, and then all these other things we're talking about. I pulled out this book, Angels. I had been talking about demons can be saved. Once again, it's a Watchtower publication. Uh, Joseph, uh, their second president, uh, uh, Judge Rutherford, had declared that the, the Holy Spirit had ceased in its operation and power in 1918. Okay? And now all, all direction from God, coming from Pleiades, I guess, was because uh, he had stated before that it took the Holy Spirit about 18 or 10 days to get to the earth from where God was. Because they don't believe the Holy Spirit is God. They believe... It's just a, a power force like electricity, you know. But I've often wondered when Jesus says, uh, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you're guilty of an eternal sin. But I've often wondered, how do you blaspheme a power beam, you know, or <laughs> electrical current? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But anyway. If you like our YouTube channel, please subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button and then by also clicking the bell above to get an automatic update whenever we produce another YouTube video for our See Answers TV channel. Please share our videos with your friends and relatives. May God bless you. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what is done for Christ will last.